What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Fandom United. My name is Gio. This is news recap for November 4th. This show is all about movie news because current events in the real world depress me. And you're here because you're a fan of movies, presumably. Uh, so today we have, of course, Zack Snyder news to talk about. Some pretty big news, actually. Uh, we have a Black Adam versus Wonder Woman tease from one of the producers. David Ayer shows off another look at Jared Leto's Joker. Please release the air cut. Come on. Robert Downey Jr. and Matt Damon join Christopher Nolan's next movie and some other exciting stuff to get to in the world of movie news. I hope all of you are alive and well out there. Here in Northern California, we are enjoying some nice fall weather. It is November. Tis the season. Holiday season is here. Movies are releasing like never before. October was such a busy month. We had The Last Duel, Venom 2, Dune, Army of Thieves, Last Night in Soho. Uh, we have Eternals tonight, which I'm going to go see in IMAX. Uh, Red Notice, that Netflix movie with Gal Gadot, Ryan Reynolds, Dwayne Johnson next week. Uh, and then Spider-Man No Way Home is right around the corner. It's a busy holiday season. I hope all of you are well and um, get to spend some time this upcoming holiday season with family. But let's get to some news. First up, we're going to talk about Zack Snyder, our guy, the coolest guy in Hollywood. He found his lead for his next sci-fi epic, Rebel Moon, that he's doing over at Netflix. And that lead is... Sophia Butella, excuse me. Sophia Butella is best known for Kingsman, where she really made her uh, big on screen debut and was just a badass. She was in Star Trek Beyond, uh, the third Star Trek movie with Chris Pine. Uh, she was an Atomic Blonde, a very <laughs> standout, memorable performance. And then she was also in The Mummy with Tom Cruise. And say what you will about The Mummy, Sofia Butella was not the problem. Um, but she has earned the lead role for Rebel Moon. And the first thought that comes to mind is Gal Gadot. What this movie could do for, F for Sofia Butella. You know, she was an actress that a lot of people on film Twitter were saying deserves more work. Like we need to see more of her. She's had a quiet couple of recent years, but now this project, if it's as great as I think it can be, man, I, I mean, she's going to kill it. I think she's going to kill it. She apparently wowed Zack Snyder and company during the uh, audition. And um, she will now be the lead role for Rebel Moon. And as a reminder, here's the synopsis for Rebel Moon. It reads, the film is set in a peaceful colony on the edge of the galaxy that finds itself threatened by the armies of the tyrannical regent, excuse me, Balisarius. They dispatch a young woman with a mysterious past to seek out warriors from neighboring planets to help them take a stand against the tyrant. This is basically Zack Snyder's love letter to Star Wars to Seven Samurai. Uh, he recently compared it to the opening sequence of Man of Steel, which, look, say what you will about the movie, okay, about that version of Superman. I am a very, very big fan of Man of Steel. If you're telling me Rebel Moon is going to be a lot like the opening Krypton sequence with uh, Russell Crowe and Michael Shannon as Jor-El and General Zod and how Krypton was destroyed. You're telling me we're getting that in Rebel Moon and then some? Wow. On Netflix? Are you kidding me? This is incredible. Sophia Butella, I'm so happy for her. She's going to absolutely own this role and uh excited to see what other castings they do i want to know who's going to play the warriors from the neighboring planets 
Are we going to get a Ray Fisher? Are we going to get a Samantha Wynn who had a standout moment in Army of the Dead? She was uh, the lady going ham, going John Wick on all the zombies. I'd love to see her. She, we probably will. And um, we'll see who else shows up from past Zack Snyder movies. You know, I would love to see Gerard Butler reteam with Zack Snyder. I love Gerard Butler, but we have not seen a performance like Leonidas since Gerard Butler did that back in 2004, 5, 2006. So just a thought. Good for you, Sophia Butella. You're going to own it. Zack Snyder is going to make you into a fucking star. All right. Let's go from Zack Snyder to DC, which they need to bring back Zack Snyder. Come on now, finish those uh, Snyder Cut sequels. But I'm going to play a video for you. This is Dwayne Johnson's producing partner, Hiram Garcia of Seven Bucks Productions, talking about the idea of Black Adam fighting Wonder Woman, something we would all want to see, especially after that Black Adam teaser at DC Fando. Let's listen. Ask you, given where we are with the actors involved, Wonder Woman, Black Adam. I mean, we got to see them together somehow. We got working on it, but I mean, to see Wonder Woman and Black Adam share the screen is going to be pretty awesome. And I honestly <laughs> feel like Wonder Woman is one of the few uh, superheroes that can go toe to toe with Black Adam. So that even more so, we need to see it. We want to see it. They're working on it. We want to see it. Yes, we do. We need to see Black Adam fight Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. We especially need to see Black Adam fight Henry Cavill Superman. Since Warner Brothers wants nothing to do with Henry Cavill Superman, maybe Dwayne Johnson can change that. You don't say no to Dwayne Johnson and his marketing team. His movies may not be the best, but the man is literally a, a, a machine that, that prints out money, anything that he does. Um, have you guys heard that rap song from... Dwayne Johnson, by the way, that's just, that guy's a baller. <laughs> he did a show called Ballers, but man, like it, the, those lyrics aren't the best lyrics, but I mean, just you go, Dwayne Johnson. Damn. But yeah, Wonder Woman versus Black Adam. It's happening. You heard it from the producer himself. Uh, that guy and Dwayne Johnson, they're like this. So we will wait and see. We have all the confidence in Black Adam next year. It's going to kill it. And hopefully this will lead to greater things. What does Dwayne Johnson always say? The hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. Well, yeah, you got to get through Wonder Woman and Superman. So those fights are on the way. They're happening. So let's go from Black Adam to Jared Leto's Joker, director David Ayer of the 2016 Suicide Squad movie, shared another look at Jared Leto's Joker on Twitter. And this is a never-before-seen look. The environment looks very familiar. This is that breakout sequence of Bell Web Prison where Joker transforms Harley Quinzel into Harley Quinn and we have another look at Jared Lowe's Joker and another tease of a different cut of the 2016 Suicide Squad movie that never saw the light of day. Look, since that movie, we have gotten Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. And that Joker was a fucking masterpiece. It was a masterpiece, okay? Does it mean we can't have multiple Jokers existing at the same time? Who's to say that anything happens with uh, anything more happens to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? I mean, the movie made a billion dollars and won major Oscar awards. If anything, was also nominated for major Oscar awards. But nothing's happening there. So what's the problem with releasing David Ayer's original Suicide Squad cut on HBO Max? You don't have to go anywhere. You can stay at home and watch the movie at your own pace. And for anybody to say 
it's going to ruin what DC is already setting up. I'm a huge DC fan. I don't even know what they're setting up. DC fandom this past year didn't give us much answers. So that tells me that Warner Brothers is full of shit, which we all knew. But come on now. What's the harm? Give everybody the opportunity to see the full performance of Jared Leto's Joker. He's gotten so much hate, so much criticism online to this day still, Jared Leto. And I think it's unfair. What is the harm? Release the air cut. Hashtag release the air cut. You know, I agree with somebody on on uh, Twitter and on another podcast who said, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And I truly believe that. The original cut of Suicide Squad will get released. And um, it's only a question of when. You think the performance of the R-rated version of James, I'm sorry, James Gunn's R rated the Suicide Squad. You think that would take uh, the air cut would take away from that? No, enough time has passed. I've said it before, release it in 2022. But, anyways, another look there it is, right there. Jared Leto's Joker. Come on, WB. Let's go to Christopher Nolan. Two big stars have joined his next movie. And this is a movie that a lot of film Twitter is like, I don't know if we really need it. But after these two casting additions, I think we need it. Robert Downey Jr. and Matt Damon have joined Christopher Nolan's next film, Oppenheimer. Robert Downey Jr. and Matt Damon joined Emily Blunt and Cillian Murphy. You may not recognize the name, but Cillian Murphy has been pretty much in a majority of Christopher Nolan's movies. He was Scarecrow in the Dark Knight trilogy. He was in Inception. He was in Interstellar. I'm not sure if he was in Tenet. I haven't seen Tenet. Um, but the frequent collaborator is getting his guy back and he's adding major star power. This is big. Adding Robert Downey Jr. and Matt Damon. I mean, if you were just like, ah, Christopher Nolan, uh, I don't know. His name doesn't carry any weight anymore. I'm not going to watch his movie. Well, now you probably are thinking about it, right? Downey and Damon. Holy crap. And apparently, Robert Downey Jr. is going to play sort of the antagonist the one trying to shut down oppenheimer who's the scientist who created the atom bomb played by cillian murphy so that's going to be exciting that's a july 2023 release we'll see if the name christopher nolan and the cast is enough to make this movie some serious money because universal gave up a lot they negotiated and they they agreed to all of Christopher Nolan's terms. No movie from Universal can release three weeks before or three weeks after this movie releases. And the fact that it's in the middle of July 2023, they're rolling the dice big time. Who's to say the movie doesn't have to compete with a Marvel movie, a DC movie, a Transformers movie, some big IP blockbuster popcorn flick. I'm curious how much of the general audience would be interested in a movie like this. Does the names have enough to carry it to must see opening weekend? We'll find out. But let me tell you, in my opinion, this movie all of a sudden went from here to here. I still need to watch Tenet. It's on HBO Max. I need to watch it. Maybe tomorrow. Last piece of news, and this one's pretty cool. We're going to talk about Gal Gadot again. She has been cast to play Evil Queen in Disney's live-action Snow White. 
she joins Rachel Zegler, who will play the titular character, with Mark Webb from the Amazing Spider-Man movies, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, directing. I love this fit. She will undoubtedly look amazing, like royalty. Can she pull off the evil character, though? I haven't seen it yet from Gal Gadot, but that doesn't mean she isn't capable. You hear interviews about actors and actresses getting to play the villain and how much fun they're having. This will be a fun role for Gal Gadot. And just real quick, Disney's live action, okay? I mean, they've been, for the most part, excellent. Cinderella, The Jungle Book, Aladdin, Lion King was okay, did not watch Dumbo, uh, what was the other one, Mulan was alright, it wasn't anything special, but it was alright, this one though, Evil Queen, Gal Gadot, Snow White, Mark Webb directing, this one has a lot of promise. Mark Webb. Say what you will about the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Those scenes with Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone were arguably the best moments of those movies. Other than Spider-Man swinging. Though that franchise, the, the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, with Spider-Man swinging and the... Uh, you know, the, the camera angles and whatnot, the shots. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Tom Holland, Spider-Man. You, you're, you're more successful critically and financially, but you got nothing on those swing shots. But Mark Webb, that guy can direct. And so I'll, we'll see what happens. This, is a, this could be a very fun new... Uh, side of Gal Gadot that we have yet to see. We shall see. And that does it for news recap for November 4th. Thank you guys for joining me so much. I appreciate your time, your subscriptions. I'm going to go watch Eternals tonight in IMAX. And um, I will shoot a review for this channel. I also need to shoot a review for Army of Thieves. I loved that movie so much. Army of Thieves. That's an indie darling. Check it out on Netflix. Even if you didn't like Army of the Dead or wasn't a fan of it, thought it was okay. Army of Thieves makes Army of the Dead even better, in my opinion. Check it out. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. And um, I think I'm going to do a trailer reaction uh, in a little bit to Morbius because I haven't seen Jerry Little's Morbius. So look out for that. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hanging in there. I know my channel has been a little bit slow on the content, but I appreciate you. Things are getting easier at work. And the easier things get, the more time I will have to do these videos. I love movies. I love talking to you. I enjoy the conversation. Let's keep it going. That's it. Hashtag release the air cut. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. My name is Geo for Phantom United. Peace.